Stress is the moment when your mind and body fall out of rhythm. Something unexpected or overwhelming appears, a challenge, a threat you can't control or foresee. In that instant, your body's ancient survival response, the fight or flight mechanism kicks in. Your brain shifts into high alert and your body surges with energy. And here's the fascinating part. Over time, we can actually become addicted to this response. Think about the people you know who seem to live on the edge of crisis, those who unknowingly thrive on the chaos. Their bodies are hooked on the adrenaline of stress, even if they're living a life that doesn't bring them peace. Consider this, when you fixate on your problems, replay negative experiences, or dwell on the worst case scenarios, your body doesn't know the difference between reality and imagination. Just by thought alone, you initiate the same stress response as if that event is happening in real time. This is how we become captives of our own minds, addicted to the chemicals of stress. And if a thought alone can generate stress hormones that begin to alter gene expression, creating conditions that can lead to illness, we have to ask, could those very thoughts also be harnessed for healing? We've seen remarkable transformations when people learn to pause in the moment of trigger, whether that trigger is frustration, impatience, or stress. Instead of reacting, they practice bringing their awareness back to the present. They sit with themselves, noticing what arises, and in doing so, recondition their body to respond differently. And when the body surrenders its habitual reaction, a powerful release of energy often follows. I've watched people recover from so-called incurable conditions, stage four cancer, ALS, muscular dystrophy, and more. But there's a key here. If you want to transform, you must break the habit of being yourself. We guide people in learning to open their hearts, reducing the dominance of survival hormones. When the heart signals to the brain that the threat has passed, something shifts. And when people feel as if their desired future is already real, they're beginning to change their biology on a profound level. This is the power of intention. When the mind and body are in harmony, the extraordinary becomes possible. To me, this is the magic of human potential. It's astonishing every time. So how do you unlock this edge? Immerse yourself in settings that cultivate growth and learning. This isn't just an idea. Our data consistently shows that when people gather to learn and expand, something extraordinary unfolds. Knowledge, especially scientifically grounded knowledge, is transformative. When people learn, they become self-empowered. They start to think differently. And when they integrate new knowledge deeply, their very being begins to shift. When you learn, you're wiring new neural connections. The more you understand not only what you're doing, but why you're doing it, the more naturally these changes come. Your actions take on meaning, and suddenly the process of transformation flows. Real, lasting change is as simple as shifting the way you think, act, and feel. And soon enough, your biology will follow suit. Now, if you put a group of people through this transformation process over, say, seven days, something fascinating happens. Despite each person having different genotypes, different races, cultures, families, by the end of those seven days, 77% of them are expressing the same proteins. Why? Because genes make proteins. They are literally expressing the same genes, evolving together as a collective, thanks to the information and the experiences they've shared. This is how we evolve. When a person experiences deep inward change, their biology begins to reflect that transformation. By the end of those seven days, they're living in what feels like a whole new life, in a new reality. Now think about this. We think about 60,000 to 70,000 thoughts a day, and for most people, 90% of those thoughts are the same as the day before. The same thoughts lead to the same choices, which create the same behaviors. Those behaviors lead to the same experiences which produce the same feelings, and those feelings influence the same thoughts again. This cycle keeps your biology stuck in the same patterns. Your chemistry, your hormones, and even your gene expression remain unchanged. When you introduce people to new insights and help them understand, share, and revisit these ideas, something remarkable happens. They start to break free from their old patterns. 
as they shift their thinking, make different choices, and feel new emotions, their biology begins to reflect these changes. Within a week, many of them appear transformed, as if they're entirely different people, and their biology confirms this story of transformation. Now, you've mentioned your father, and while I can't speak to his case specifically, the question is powerful. Can prolonged negative thoughts and emotions trigger genes associated with disease? Based on what we know, the answer is yes. When we're stressed, our brain and body fall out of balance. Our autonomic nervous system is designed to recalibrate us back to stability, but if we're living in perpetual stress, anchored in fear or anxiety, the body's reserves get depleted. Each time we perceive a threat beyond our control, we activate that fight or flight response, flooding our body with energy and arousing the brain. Over time, this flood becomes addictive, binding us to a cycle of stress. When stress hormones stay active for extended periods, they begin to break down the body, they weaken immunity, alter brain chemistry, and can even turn on genes that predispose us to illness. So yes, living in constant stress creates the conditions for disease, because the body never gets the chance to restore balance. But here's the breakthrough. If negative thoughts can harm, new thoughts and actions can heal. We've seen it happen time and again. When people learn to release the grip of stress and rewire their responses, profound changes take place. The body has a built-in capacity to heal, and by aligning our thoughts, feelings, and actions, we give it that opportunity. Short bursts of stress are adaptive. They're what our survival system is designed for. But when stress becomes chronic and can't be turned off, that's where disease takes root. Why? Because the body adjusts to this stress as if it were its new normal, its new balance. And that prolonged imbalance is what we label disease. The brain becomes disordered, the heart becomes disordered, and in a constant state of survival, we move further from health. Now, think about what happens under stress. Where does your mind go? You often dwell on problems or maybe imagine a worst case scenario or relive painful memories. By giving all of your focus to these thoughts, you begin to make the same brain and body chemistry as if these events were unfolding in real time. The body is so literal that it doesn't know the difference between an actual event and the mental movie you're replaying. It assumes it's living in that exact environment. Here's the game changer. Your environment influences your genes, and the emotional outcome of any experience is what signals those genes. So yes, we can become addicted to our thoughts. If you can activate the stress response purely through thought, and we know that stress hormones downregulate genes creating conditions for disease, then yes, your thoughts can make you sick. But if thoughts can make you sick, we have to ask, can they also make you well? We discovered that when you teach someone to manage their attention, to really train themselves to redirect their focus and energy, they begin to catch themselves spiraling into that worst case scenario. Instead of reacting, they learn to bring their awareness back to the present moment. Now, if they notice they're getting impatient, frustrated, or stressed, and instead of quitting or saying, I can't do this, it's too hard, they sit with themselves and lower the intensity of that emotion, they begin to recondition their body to a new mind. And eventually, the body surrenders, and there's a release of energy. This practice, this act of mastering your internal state, opens the door to real change. Now, what if you could take that same process, and instead of imagining the worst, you imagined a new future? What if you could feel the emotion of that future before it even happens? The stronger the emotion you feel, the more deeply that thought gets ingrained in your brain. You're literally branding it neurologically. And just like before, your body responds to that emotional experience as if it's living in a new environment. You're signaling your genes to change your biology by thought alone. I've watched people make radical transformations, leaping from one state of mind and body into an entirely new one within just seven days. The changes I've witnessed are astonishing, almost beyond belief. People have overcome stage four cancers that had spread throughout their bodies, regained sight after years of blindness, recovered hearing, and even reversed conditions like ALS, muscular dystrophy, and Parkinson's. These aren't just stories, they're profound, inexplicable changes in people who were once told healing was impossible. But here's something important. Many of us don't realize we're hooked, chemically addicted, 
to thought patterns and emotional states that no longer benefit us. It sounds strange, but we're actually dependent on these old limiting states, even though they harm us. This is why real transformation requires more than just a change of mind. It calls for breaking free from deeply ingrained cycles, shifting both body and mind toward new possibilities. That's where true healing begins. We use meditation as a tool for transformation, not in a mystical sense, but as a practice grounded in science. I'm not approaching this from a spiritual tradition. My focus is on measurable change, on the data we collect, and with the amount of evidence we now have, we can say with certainty that transformation is within reach. If you wake up every day and think, feel, and act the same way, by the time you're halfway through life, you've become hardwired to be that way. The brain has set itself into familiar beliefs, behaviors, and attitudes, while the emotions you revisit every day become who you are. By midlife, 95% of who we are is simply a bundle of automatic programs and responses. So if you truly want to change, it's not enough to just think positively. You have to dismantle the old self to disrupt the patterns of who you've always been. You need to unwind those neural circuits wired into your brain over decades. And this requires intention and energy because for most people, when a limiting thought shows up, the thought that says, I can't, or it's too difficult, or my life is a mess, they simply surrender to it. What we've discovered is that with enough awareness, you can look at that thought without reacting, without engaging, without letting it pull you down. You can begin to deconstruct it. That old limiting thought or emotion feels massive, like a giant obstacle in your mind. But if you face it and observe without reacting, it starts to lose its power. This process requires energy because for years you've been getting up every day and immediately diving into thoughts of your problems. Those problems are linked to specific people, places, memories, and events. Every time you revisit them, you're setting your mind in the past, reliving those old emotions. The moment you feel a familiar feeling, unworthiness, regret, fear, your body is back in the past. Because thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body, how you think and feel defines your state of being. When you recycle those same thoughts and emotions, you condition your body to become an extension of those feelings, to live as if it's locked in the past. But here's the beauty. When you step out of those old thoughts and emotions, you step into the freedom to redefine who you are. And that's where transformation happens. To break free from this, to step out of the familiar, takes the same amount of energy and awareness. The emotions of guilt, unworthiness, or fear are what keep you anchored in the past. You have to become so conscious of those feelings that you refuse to let them run your day unconsciously. That's the real work. The process of overcoming those emotions is the process of becoming something new. We've discovered there's a formula to get into the subconscious mind, the operating system where these programs live, and rewire it. This takes practice, but it's possible. Through meditation, you can get beyond the analytical mind and enter the realm where real change happens. You're not just thinking positively. You're rewiring your brain and your body. Meditation isn't just about healing. When you change, healing naturally follows. But it's not just about sitting quietly. You're facing your inner self. You're observing when the body gets emotional or reactive, and instead of reaching for a distraction like your phone or getting up to escape, you stay with it. When you train your body to be fully anchored in the present, you're breaking free from the old programming. This is about cultivating a willpower that transcends ingrained habits so that eventually the body surrenders to the guidance of the mind. And what follows? A release, a liberation of energy that was once trapped in those patterns. Meditation at its core means to become familiar with. You're becoming so deeply aware of your unconscious self that you stop slipping back into those autopilot behaviors. You pull yourself away from the external world, disconnect from the sensations of your body, and let go of time altogether. Only then do you ask yourself, what thoughts do I want to impress upon my brain? What intentions do I want to manifest? With focused energy, you begin rehearsing those new thoughts and gradually as you repeat them neurons that fire together wire together creating a new network in the brain before you know it these thoughts are running in the background like a new software program a belief is simply a thought repeated until it sticks so by wiring these new thoughts you're creating a fresh set of beliefs a belief system that tells you you can 
people who've radically transformed their lives didn't just meditate for an hour a day and stop there. No, they practiced intensely, going so deep in their meditation that they could carry it over into the rest of their life. They rehearsed how they would interact with the people they struggle with, how they would feel when faced with old triggers, how they'd respond in moments of challenge. Because if you fall back into the same behaviors, you'll create the same environment that led to your original struggle. Your personality shapes your personal reality. So if you're looking to manifest a new reality, you have to shift who you are on a fundamental level. You can't afford to go back on autopilot. These individuals mentally rehearsed their new selves. How would I respond differently? What does love look like here? How would greatness feel in this moment? They practiced this new way of being until it became automatic. And science supports this. Mental rehearsal alone can rewire the brain, reshaping it as if you've already lived through those new experiences. The brain doesn't distinguish between what's real and what's imagined, so it starts to reflect the new you. In the end, this is the path to real transformation. It's not enough to hope for change. You have to live it in every cell, with every thought, feeling, and action. That's when you become the person you're destined to be.